meet DeAnthony Pierre, one of the best pitchers in the Conference USA this season. 19 years old, physically imposing, he's got it all. Now one thing he doesn't have though, is an MLB contract. But he comes from a long family line of historically big, imposing athletes. Daniel Pierre, his younger brother, is actually the number one recruit in the country in football, and he could be following his bigger brother to Charlotte next season. Now, DeAnthony is just a sophomore, 19 years old. He's got a three-pitch repertoire with a fastball, changeup, and a slider, and he's really cut off of his fourth pitch. He doesn't really have, he doesn't really use it too much. It's kind of a curveball that doesn't really have too much break. But here in his last game of the season, he's got to showcase his talent and show what he's got in order to get drafted to the next level. Welcome to college baseball. Today, we will be checking out the last game of the season where Charlotte will take on Rutgers and on the mound will be their ace, DeAnthony Pierre, nine and seven record on the year. He does post kind of a higher ERA, 3-3 ERA in college, that's kind of high, and then about a 1-2 whip. He's gonna really need to showcase his talents in this game. So he faces a decent Rutgers lineup. Let's see what he does here. Here's Tyler Sasko, who was a all Big Ten player last season, and he does ground out right back to Pierre for the first out of the inning. Now the guys to look out for in this lineup are Shannon Derby and Chris Brewster right in the middle, three and four. And then Joe Ruffner is a decent DH, but you gotta watch out for the center fielder in the third base in this lineup. Now, Tyler Sasko was a very good player last year as well, and here comes Sidorowicz up to the plate. He hits one to the left side, and that is just a fly ball. Can of corn for the left fielder. Now, here comes Shannon Derby having a little bit of a down year, but historically he has shown that he has been a very good player for this Rutgers team. His first pitch is down in the zone, and he goes down and gets it and muscles it to left field over the third baseman's head, and Rucker starts out this game with a hit with two outs in the first inning. The lefty is on first and up comes the fourth hitter. This is gonna be Chris Brewster hitting 257 on the year. He has an inside pitch and that is swung on and missed. That one hit 100 miles an hour on the gun and Pierre gets out of the first inning here, no damage done. On to the second inning. Here is Joe Ruffner at the plate as he fouls one off, bringing it to a one-two count. No outs here in the second, and he swings and misses. That slider has definitely been Pierre's best pitch this season. That's his second strikeout of the game, and this is what hitters do. They reach for that slider outside and swinging and missing, and that is going to be the second of the game, the second K for Pierre. So here's Conforti to the lineup, and he's just looking at the knees. That is a called strike three, the third strike out of the game. And Pierre has that velocity on that fastball. He's definitely got to get the movement, though, going to the next level. Jamie Clements to the plate here with two outs. He hits one to the right side, and that is snagged by the second baseman, thrown on to first in the third out of the inning. We move on to the fourth inning here. Sidorowicz back at the plate. He swings and misses, and that is an outside fastball. Fifth strikeout of the game for Pierre. He looks good through four about four and a third as here is another strikeout this time derby is going to strike out on this one that's his sixth strikeout of the game so far pierre is looking good derby was way ahead of that pitch inside slider you're gonna miss every single time so now with two outs here's their best hitter on the squad chris brewster and now he's facing a one two count here with two outs nobody on pierre in the windup and the pitch and he does get some wood on it, and that's that famous outside slider from Pierre, and it's just a ground out to the right side of the field, and Pierre is through four. No damage done at all, just one hit given up. Charlotte finally gets some run support for Pierre, but now we are on to the top of the sixth inning. Now facing the eight hitter, Jordan Brown. He's swinging a mission at that changeup. That changeup is decent, 
It doesn't have a whole lot of movement, but it definitely takes a lot off of that fastball, and that's where you fool the college hitters. Definitely going to need to get some more movement on that going into the pros. We'll see where he goes in the draft. Chris Donnelly up to the plate. He's swinging and missing on the outside part of the plate. Nine strikeouts here for Pierre, and that brings up Tyler Sasko, the leadoff man, and he's swinging and missing, striking out the side here in the sixth inning. That's his 10th of the game, and Pierre could go for his career high of 12 strikeouts as now we move on to the seventh. Sidorowitz at the plate. He's swinging and missing. He has not touched the ball yet. That is his third strikeout of the game. Shannon Derby, one for two, and right over the middle, he misses the changeup. And how about back-to-back, -back? five straight strikeouts, make it six. Brewster swings and misses, and Pierre now has his career high in strikeouts with 13 as we move on to the eighth inning. Matthew Conforti, he comes to the lineup, hits one right back to Pierre. He knocks it down, throwing on to first. And now here we go, two outs here in the eighth inning. Let's see what Pierre can do. Clements up to the plate. He's already struck him out once. Let's see if he can do it again. One, two count. Inside slide, uh, inside changeup that is. And a strike three swinging. And Rutgers has not touched Pierre all day. Only that one hit by Derby in the first. And now we move on to the ninth. Jordan Brown leads it off. High heat. He's swinging and missing. How about Pierre in this one? That's his 16th strikeout of the game. And it looks like Brown not even close with that pitch. It looked like he just guessed and swung. And now Chris Donnelly out to the plate. 0 for 2 in this game. Outside pitch. He goes with the pitch. And it's just a lazy ground ball to first base. 16 strikeouts, one hit. Can he keep this intact here in the ninth inning with two outs? Tyler Sasko at the plate. One of the best leadoff hitters in the country. Maybe having a bit of a down year. But let's see what he does. The 1-1 pitch is on. Pierre throws. It's going to, get, going to be a ground ball to short and a throw on the run. And that is a complete game one hitter. 16 strikeouts. That's a career high for Pierre. What a performance here in his last college game. You got to think he's going to get drafted next year. We'll have to see. Now, DeAnthony Pierre, one of the best players in the Conference USA, maybe even the country, I think he played on a team that was a little weak. They didn't make it at all to the next round. They didn't make it to, you know, the regionals or super regionals or anything like that. They were just kind of a team that was hovering around just being okay. But that's all right. Because De DeAnthony Pierre really, really stuck out this year. He took his game to another level as a sophomore, and now he's prepared for the next level. And he got some news. In the 15th round of the MLB draft, he got selected by the Colorado Rockies. We'll see what he can build on, what he can build. He's got a lot of work to do. He's got the big arm, but he doesn't have the movement on the pitches that he wants. He does have that good slider, but versus major league, minor league level players, that's not going to work. But we'll see what Pierre can evolve into. He's got the work ethic. He's got the athleticism. He can do it all. I'm excited to find out. <laughs>